Hello, hello, hello. Today is Monday, March 18, 2024. I will post the solutions, not my solutions, but key solutions to problem 195. It's an extremely easy problem and my rough guess is, I didn't count them exactly, that there were about maybe a dozen correct solutions. Tomorrow I will post another solution to 195, which is Ulf Heller's solution. Today, Kies Norman. His is a video. Ulf Hellers will not be a video. But Ulf Hellers is also very, very nice. So, if you couldn't do this problem, which is hard to believe, it either means you were lazy and you were not willing to put in any efforts by watching some of my videos, or you just know <laughs> not even high school physics. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 195, uh, and I do suggest that you watch his lecture 20 of 802, uh, where you can learn all about this kind of thing with an inductor and how the current varies. But to remind you, how current varies in an inductor. When we close the switch, the current cannot instantaneously change. It follows a curve. It's actually an exponential, um, but it, in this instance it doesn't matter. It follows a curve from zero to some limiting value a long time later. That's what happens when the switch is closed. Similarly, when we open the switch, uh, the current in I3 will fall from whatever it was here, it will fall down and eventually, if we just leave the switch open, it will end up going back to zero. So that's basically what happens. Um, and all we're concerned about are the endpoints, um, if you like, the, the asymptote here uh, and the zeros here, uh, here and here. So for part A, when we close the switch, that remains at zero and we simply have a current circulating round here, which means that I3 equals zero, I2 must equal I1, and it's, and it's simply uh, E divided by R1 plus R2, R1 plus R2. For part B, uh, the current has now uh, reached its limiting value in the inductor, um, and so this appears to the rest of the circuit to be a short circuit, a, 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 a simply a wire. It isn't, in, in, of course, but it appears to be as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned because there is no flux change and therefore no EMF due to the inductance uh, around any, any loop. So we can then say, well, the total resistance determines I1. OK, the total resistance, R2 plus R3 in parallel plus R1, gives you that expression for the total resistance. And so I1 is simply E uh, divided by the total resistance, Ohm's law. For I2, we use um, the V equals E minus I1 R1 and V equals I R2, because when the switch is closed, all this is at zero volts. And that gives us... I2 equals this expression here. Uh, I3 is simply I1 minus I2, and so it must be this expression here. OK, that's part A and part B. For part C, we now uh, open the circuit, open the switch again, um, and as I've said before, the current here cannot instantaneously change. Well, that makes Part, part C mean that I3 is exactly the same current as when the switch was closed in part B. And it's that expression there. I1 must be zero. 
the, with the switch open, it has to be zero. No argument about that. So we have I3 equals that, I1 equals that. So I2 must equal minus I3. There is only current circulating around there, and it is going that way. It, it, it's not going the other way, don't be fooled. So I've explicitly said minus I3, and it gives you that value here. After a long time, the magnetic energy in the, in the uh, magnetic field in, in the inductor will die to zero, uh, used up as heat in the resistors. So this is circulating, and after a long time, it gets weaker and weaker. So eventually, R R I2 and I3 will become zero, just like I1. And there you are. Part D done. And that is my solution to problem 195. Thank you.